Kind of lean back here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I promise. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll tell you when I'm gonna press the shutter. Let me just get my focus. All right. All right, well, I will hit you up. I uh, slightly guessed my exposure. Oh, yeah? Yeah, pressure now, though, dude. Basically, it was at 2.8, it was 1,000 somehow. Oh, not some, that makes sense. 2.8, yeah, because I wasn't shooting wide open. Anyways, my meter said 2.8, 1,000, and um, I can't do 1,000 on this camera. 200 is the max. Okay. So I did 5.6 at 200. That's two stops. That should get me in the ballpark. That should be all good. Yeah. Give you that flexibility. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll see. The first photo with them together, that's the one I needed to bring them in, but that's not yeah. the one I like. Yeah, there's no, not no. enough space in there for that light stream. <laughs> um, the second photo of him by himself, though, that's the good one. <laughs> and I did a full body one there. The only problem is there's a fucking lifesaver, life preserver I right saw, there. Oh, yeah. It's going to be in the photo. But you can you Photoshop know that out. Watch out. But that's good. It's all right, you know. <laughs> I think that's a good first start. He's exactly. looking fly too. He is looking good. That's man. the easy way. I'm telling everybody says this. The easy way to get it's people flattered. is look for the people who are looking fly. Yeah, because they dress like dress that for up, a reason, man. When you dress up, you got something easy to say. Just exactly. Flatter them real quick. Like, you, know? ooh, ooh. you don't want to be a creep, especially if you're a guy and talking to a girl. Like, you can <laughs> easily just be a weirdo. But uh, you know, you just gotta kind of give the good energy, <laughs> reel them in, and then go from there. But yeah, no, I think that was a good start. We had a nice little patch of light coming through, which I think should be interesting. Yeah. And he was looking good. I just hope I didn't miss focus. <laughs> Take my fucking jacket off soon. It's hot. Dude, you're gonna have to, right, man. You ready? Yeah. Another one. Mm. I'll add that kicking sound one. Yeah, it's a good one. Yeah. This has a very light little. It honestly almost. It's way quieter than this. Yeah. Like this shit. Oh, that thing slaps. I mean, not like a DSLR, but yeah. But this this thing is like a little like. It's almost mm. like getting a vaccine. You know, just a little. <laughs> you're like, oh, it's over already. Have you seen? Uh, have you seen? The, uh, you've obviously seen the cut in, inside that camera, isn't it? It's like a metal in shield. This, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mine has all kinds of like dents. Oh, on dude! It yeah. I got lucky, man. Mine has nothing. Mine has been beat up for sure. Uh, my, mine's in that category where it's like, should I really use it? I can resell that. What is good? Welcome back to the channel. So as you already saw, I had a nice outing. I got out, did a lot of photography, shot a bunch on the Rolly Flex and also shot on my Canon 7, which you're not gonna see those images here because that's for something else. But yeah, I shot a ton on the Rolly Flex and I brought with me this right here. This is the star of today's video and that is Fuji CDU2. Basically, in short, this is film that's used to duplicate slides. Um, duplication film is what they call it. Um, what I did with this is actually cross process it. So I shot it at ISO 50 as per the recommendations from the Northern Film Lab. And yeah, I x pro it in C41 cam. So I treated it like your classic C41 film. Real quick, go to Northern Film Lab on Instagram, check out their whole selection, go on their website, check out their eBay store as well, all the links down below. But they've got a lot of really cool kind of abnormal films and things that you can only get in bulk and then cut down. So go support their hard work and definitely check out some of this Fuji CDU too. So this film is very interesting. Um, when you cross process it, it actually gives you a very usable color palette. I find that with other slide films, let's say Ektachrome for example, when you cross process that, it just falls apart. It doesn't look good. It's something like Velvia for example, same thing. You get all this crazy kind of color cast. It's not for me. Some people do it, that's cool with them. 
Um, but this one, for some reason, when you cross pass, I say, gives you very true to life colors. And I love that because it brings you to the realm of what I think could look cool, but then it still has a little bit of funk in there and something kind of odd, which I think um, adds a bit of new intrigue and also stylizes your images a little bit. It's kind of like, you know, doing a little bit of Photoshopping, but in the dark room. So it's really fun to use this. And again, I think because of that interesting look that it gives, it's a really good film to use in, in kind of more leisure situations. So again, if you're going on a trip or maybe you're doing some portraits with somebody who's a little bit funky and you're trying to change things up, I think this is a really good option. Also shooting it at ISO 50 means you can shoot wide open on basically any camera. So something like on my Pens SX7, which I actually haven't used with this film, but you can shoot at 2.4 on your 105 lens. You can shoot 2.8 on basically any other lens for any other camera system, it's great. You don't have to worry about having to stop down or anything like that because the film is a bit slow. So this is a lot of fun to do and it just overall kind of opens up some new options that you might not be used to with more classic films like let's say Portrait 400. So I actually have some prints here. Um, this film was not intended for RA4 process for darkroom printing, but of course I tried it anyways. This is the first print I wanna show you and this is actually an image from the Isle of Wight. Check out this video up above here. That's my trip with Roger uh, from Shoot From Like a Boss. I visited him in the Alawai and we shot a ton of film. That video includes all the ortho shots. This was not in the video, but it's from the same day. So this is one of the shots from the Fuji CDU2. And basically, um, something really interesting is going on with the colors here. I played around with a lot of different colors in, in the dark room. You can see the test prints here in this little sample. Um, but as you can see, there's a lot of different colors in there. And I basically eventually settled on this. I love what's going on with the sky and what's going on in the distance. And I love the kind of golden color that's on these rocks here, but the water, the dark water just kind of picked up that golden hue in a way that I didn't enjoy. And I don't think I was able to pull that out without pulling out the, the colors that I like from everywhere else. So I think this cross process film, perhaps in the in the shadows and in the yellows in the shadows, does a little something strange. I'm not sure. Again, it's darkroom printing. This isn't what it's intended for. So who knows? But, um, you know, if I had more time or if I really cared to go further, I probably could have gone really far and try to pull the exact color that I wanted in the water and perhaps maybe salvage the rest of the image. Here you've got this kind of yellowy golden hue on the water that I kind of don't think looks legit and it's bothering me a little bit. Sometimes I like it, sometimes I don't. I kind of liked it when I was done with the print initially and looked at it under the, um, the light, the LED light, just to kind of see what it looked like and it looked good. But then now I don't like it as much. So that's what happens with darkroom printing. You always want to kind of print a couple different things to see which one you like the most. Um, so that's that image and there's some blotches here. This negative got messed up I'm not exactly sure how but you know that dot is on the negative itself and it's not coming out um, The other print that I have is actually one of the images from the video that you saw earlier Which was me walking around London getting portraits of people. There was no video footage of this one unfortunately because um, I separated from the group to go get this image and therefore nobody was recording me But we went to a skate park and this dude was chilling in there and there was an area of the skate park that had this beautiful kind of hard light just beaming through this one section. And that's that big highlight that you see there. And I asked this dude, like, hey, can you just stand in that beam of light? You know, give me your best pose. And I angled him perfectly so that the light was coming in kind of from the side and from above. And I think this looks fantastic. I'm really happy how it turned out. It's really interesting that beam of light just cuts through the image, adds a little of intrigue. And he's shining, he's looking good. The colors here aren't ideal. That golden sunlight is a little bit green and maybe a little bit too kind of orangey. So I probably should have messed with that a bit more to pull out some more colors, but um, this was actually just one single print. Remember, I did this one first, and then I was like, you know what, let me stick a different Fuji negative in there from the same film stock, just another roll, and let me just use the same settings and see what happens. And this is what happened. So I'm actually pretty happy with it, given that I did no tinkering whatsoever. This was just one random kind of guest print, and it's not perfect by any means, but I like it, so I'm gonna keep it. In general, though, it was a lot of fun messing with this film in the dark room. Um, it's fun to, to kind of mess around with things that aren't the standard or the kind of the norm. And I think that's what I love about film photography in general, but that's what I love about using films like this. You can kind of just mess around and see if you can create something different out of some, you know, common processes. And yeah, that's what we did here. We cross processed this with C41, which is the first thing you're not really supposed to do. And then we try to darkroom print this with RA4 print process, which is definitely not what you're supposed to do with this either. And we've got some usable results that actually look pretty cool. So I highly recommend you all go check this out. Links down below. And yeah, have fun with it. I think this is great for something leisure. If you're going out for a walk, or you're going on a trip, I think this is a great film to use. And it's got the sprocket holes on it on one side, which I think everyone loves seeing. When I put some samples on Instagram of my scans, everyone was like, what is that? What is that? You gotta tell me what that film is. 
And there's something about sprocket holes on 120 that is just so captivating and makes people just go nuts. So definitely check this out. Um, but yeah, let me know. Any of you used this before? I'm curious what experience you've had. Um, maybe any pointers or any advice for me with regards to kind of what the point of this film is. But in general, just want to hear what you all have been up to if any of you used this before. So that's what I got for today. If you enjoyed the video, please go ahead and like the video. And of course, go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. To the next video, y'all. I'm out.